anything were to be described as a low-hanging fruit amongst the initiatives on Shippers Council's agenda, it would be the inland dry ports. And not just any one of those ports. It would be that of Dala and that of Ibadan. They are almost ripe for the plucking. The ESCEO Honorable Emmanuel Jime recently led a management team to Ibadan to see Governor Shei Makinde to tie up any loose ends. That's the focus of today's discourse on the shipper. Stay with us as we take a short break. Nigerian shippers can so day to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian shippers can so they feel in a parrot now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian shippers can so we don't shop proper to fit here you well. Work with you well and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian shippers can so get every every now to film make government consider the problem when she pass them the face visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily a papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng we website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng nigerian shippers council with a meet now for the port of nani welcome back my name is rekia zikru yagoyaju you're watching The Shipper, brought to you by Nigeria's port economic regulator, Nigerian Shippers Council. An inland dry port, when fully operational, is a port of destination and a port of origin that serves shippers who are not located near the port. It saves them the trouble of making arrangements to evacuate or send their consignments to the major seaports. It also saves costs in so many ways, and that is very important. On the shipper today, we examine the visit of the Executive Secretary of Nigerian Shippers Council to Oyo State and the latest on the Ibado Dry Port. Lucy Lube now brings us up to speed. For the newly minted Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer, Honorable Emmanuel Jime, the two day working visit to neighboring Oyo State was long overdue, having been on his agenda since he came on board. Honorable Jime was accompanied by some members of the council's top management to meet with Governor of Oyo State, His Excellency Engineer Shei Makinde. The Governor welcomed the new NSC boss and his team to Oyo State while wishing him a successful tenure as the CEO of the council. Speaking on the Ibadan Inland Dry Port, the governor said Oyo State Government is ready to continue the partnership with Nigerian Shippers Council for speedy realization of the project. According to him, the Inland Dry Port is a project of top priority for his administration, promising that the host state will give the council the maximum support needed for the project to be completed. Governor Mackinday assured the visiting management team that Oyo State is open to constructive criticism and welcomes all partners in progress. If there are things that we also need to do to fast track this project, we really want to do it because uh, it's a game changer for us. We've written to the federal government to give us uh, the road from Old Rajo to uh, that's money are interchange. The Executive Secretary and CEO of the Council, Honorable Emmanuel Jime, disclosed that all outstanding issues in the full business case and the concessionaire agreement that will drive the development of Ibadan Inland Dry Port have been resolved. He commended the state government for the pivotal role it has played in the development of Ibadan Inland Dry Port. 
According to him, the outstanding issues that had not been addressed by the Oyo state government include the payment of compensation for the 90 hectares of land acquired for the project. The state government had agreed to provide the underlisted infrastructure. And I think for benefit of our visit, I'll just read a couple of them out quickly. Because we feel these are necessary for the successful takeoff and operation of the project. One, the government has committed your excellency to provide the link route from the entrance and exit of the Ibadan Dry Port. You also have committed to build a frame bridge at the entrance and exit of Ibadan Dry Port, connection of the Ibadan Inland Dry Port to 33 kV power supply, last but not least reconstruction of Oyo Ibadan to Ammonia Ishein. Road. The state government uh, uh, also accepted to participate in the equity holding of the special purpose vehicle to be set up for the project. The executive secretary also held an interactive session with stakeholders in the southwest zone where challenges and some issues facing the project were discussed. Representing Governor Shea Makinde at the stakeholders' interactive session, the secretary to the state government, Mrs. Olubamiwo Adeoshu, said that the stakeholders' meeting was convened at the right time when issues affecting the speedy completion of the project could be discussed in order to move the project forward. We started the discussion between the Nigeria Shippers Council or your state government and the concessionaires for over two years. But we had to slow down a lot, and at the time, we even moved on to Zoom meetings because of COVID. Mm. So like um, the executive secretary said, now things have picked up. What is most important is both at the state level and at the federal government level, we are all committed to making this project happen. The Commissioner of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Mr. Olaiwola Olushego Emmanuel, said that the Oyo State Government has approved 1 billion naira as compensation to the landowners of Ibadan Dry Port site. The only problem we had in the past it was about uh, you know, the new president of the civil salary. And uh, just on Monday, there was a meeting between the accountant general, the due process, because the accountant general was of the opinion that we need certificate of new this and that. And the due process, as you said, it's not procurement, it's not contract. So they don't need that certificate. So that one has been laid to rest. So I can assure you, you will, in a couple of weeks, I said that they should let me have the list of those that to be compensated. I want to go through the list again, and after that, you will be paid by the grace of God. Speaking on behalf of traditional rulers in Akinyele local government area, the Alakinyele of Akinyele, His Royal Highness James Adeniro, urged the government to expedite action on Ibadan Dry Port project. We are happy when the government does appointed one of our own son as a commissioner for land. That's so much happy. And four or five days ago, we paid him a visit. The first thing we put across the room that, you know, we congratulate you that you are our son, we are having a problem by this guy. That was the problem, the son of the son. Before he talked, he said, what are you saying with me? This is a Kelly guy. Before you even come, I started working. What we do not know for years, you are able to know that our development is my flag. And sooner or later, sooner or later, the area that you are afraid of will, what we are will not be there again. He promised us. He said, I'm your son. I can't deceive you. If they are deceiving you for the past, I'm telling them. Our government is a listening government. The executive secretary further expressed gratitude to the state government for partnering with Shippers Council to expand the activities of the maritime industry through the establishment of Ibadan Inland Dry Port. He said that he was optimistic that the dry port project, when completed and operational, will ease the business of shipping for shippers in the entire southwestern region 
and indeed beyond. I come here in Kotsi, in all due humility, to listen to you, to understand what are the challenges that the shippers of the Southwest Zone face, which are the areas that we need action to be taken so that we can collaborate and work together to see how we're able to resolve some of the challenging problems that we're facing in our maritime space, and in particular here in the South West Zone. He called on the stakeholders to take advantage of the mechanisms that NSC has put in place. For instance, the Port Service Support Portal, PSSP, which can address their complaints and problems with dispatch. He said gone are the days when shippers' cancel was seen as a toothless bulldog. Uh, today, I want to inform you, shippers of the Southwest, that the government of this country, in its wisdom, put in place what is called a port process manual, the NPPM. Now, that port process manual has the responsibility of ensuring that everybody in the industry is guided by certain rules and regulations. And that if there is perceived infraction, there is now a mechanism available under the task team that is put in place by the federal government to ensure compliance with the procedure that we have in place. So I want to let you know today that if anybody commits infractions and we get to know about it through your usage of our complaint mechanism, that believe me, there is enforcement available for us to use the mechanism of the NPPM in order to sanction. The shipper spoke to stakeholders in the industry about their challenges and expectations. It's a good body, but unfortunately in Kora, shipping activity is still very low. This is the area we are trying to work upon, so that we can be able to benefit more from Kora State. I think that they have been able to construct this inland container depot. Things will move very fast. But no, Lagos activity is very choky now. So moving goods to Lagos is not easy now. So we hope, we pray to the government to help us speed up the activities of this inland container depot so that export activities can rise very high. A lot of challenges in terms of importing in the port. At times we to go and we are unable to clear our goods on time. At times we still run to a dumb ridge. I need to pay extra money, extra charges before we can clear the goods. We are expecting more enlightenment on how we can solve our problem and how they can come to our aid to solve the problem we are facing and challenges we are facing. The NSC boss had earlier met with staff in Southwest Zone where the director of the zone, Mr. Glory Onajedo, welcomed him and briefed him on the activities of the office in the Southwest Zone. We do stakeholder registration of service users and service providers, but it is of note that in the Southwest Zone, there are six shippers associations, namely the Kitty Shippers Association, Quara Shippers Association, the Shippers Association of Ogun State, the Shippers Association of Ondo State, uh, Oshun Shippers Association, and the Shippers Association of Oyo State. They are all functional, they are all active. Avid, some of them, particularly the Ogun State, Ogun Shippers Association needs to be reorganized. The Executive Secretary, in his response, commended the staff for their dedication. I've come here and Glory has given me a brilliant picture of your activities and the projects that are being embarked upon. I believe that when the Ibadan dry port comes into operation, it will be a flagship dry port. Because from how it has been conceived, that dry port will excel and exceed all the other dry ports that have been conceived. I consider it an article of faith that we will do everything in our past. And I'm glad that I came here with the director of Inland Transport Service. Uh, and of course, the gentleman who is uh, supervising the PPP desk. Uh, these are all relevant offices as far as this particular point that I'm raising. So when we go back, we'll have to now begin the work. 
He said NSC would ensure the provision of conducive working environment for its staff. It is heartwarming to know that the activation of Ibadan's inland dry port is top priority for all actors. It's now time to move to the Titbits Corner where Abike Idowu is standing by to serve up a menu of news from around the maritime sector worldwide. It's tidbits on your favorite maritime program, The Shipper. I am Abike Ido. Nigerian Shippers Council recently donated a dialysis machine to General Hospital Lagos as part of its corporate social responsibility program. What does a dialysis machine, such as the one donated by Shippers Council, do? Well, a dialysis machine is used to filter a patient's blood to remove excess water and waste products when the kidneys are damaged, dysfunctional, or missing. The dialysis machine itself can be thought of as an artificial kidney. The dialysis unit to which the Gambro dialysis machine was donated has been in existence for 14 years, catering to an average of 70 patients per month, which is like three to four dialysis every day. Let's take a listen to the executive secretary and CEO of Nigerian Shippers Council, Emmanuel Jime, who personally handed over the machine and accompanying items. In all humility, uh, to show an example in our opinion of what corporate social responsibility actually means. Uh, from the records available and information that I've gotten, dialysis, hemodialysis, it's just one form of how renal therapy is delivered. There are other forms of course, but in our country, the information I have is that this is the only available means by which therapy can be delivered. The medical director and CEO of the General Hospital, Dr. Ismail Ganikale, spoke to the shippers' correspondents, Zena Bilakos and Chizoba Okeke. We have a dialysis center that currently has two functional machines. An average of uh, 70 patients are attended to monthly, which comes to about three to four dialysis done per workday. And the additional dialysis machine being donated today will come out very handy because it means we can efficiently manage those patients and even more because uh, rather than have these machines that we continually use frequently with uh, the breakdown and maintenance. So definitely it will improve our work efficiency and response to patients that require such services. Dr. Odeyemi Ayola is the consultant neurologist at the General Hospital Lagos. It's so alarming the rate at which we have a lot of patients coming down with kidney related conditions and so we have a huge demand on hemodialysis services. So this is a very nice gesture. This, donating this machine to this hospital is a very nice gesture. The General Hospital at Odon is the oldest hospital in Nigeria, having been established in 1893. That makes it 128 years old. And now, Global Maritime News. AP Mola Mesk is selling its reefer container manufacturing company to China International Marine Containers, CIMC, in a $987.3 million deal. The sale of Mesk Container Industry, MCI, to Chinese firm CIMC is part of Mesk's continued moves to focus on being an integrated container transport and logistics company. CIMC will take over the entire MCI organization, including its reefer factory in Xindao, China, as well as its R&D and test engineering facility in Tinglev, Denmark. We believe that we in CIMC have found a good long-term owner of MCI, said Henriette Halberg, CEO of Fleet and Strategic Brand for AP Mola Mesk. The transaction is valued at $987.3 million on a cash debt-free basis. The 2,300 employees of MCI will become employees of CIMC upon completion of the deal, which is expected to be in 2022 or earlier. 
The Estonian energy company, Elenja, has taken delivery of the first of Damien's new class of liquefied gas carrier. The 100-meter vessel named Optimus will carry up to 6,000 meter cube of LNG in two type C tanks at minus 163 degrees Celsius. The vessel, which was delivered in the port of Rotterdam, will be the first LNG bunkering vessel in the Gulf of Finland, serving both LNG-powered vessels and smaller shoreside customers. Its introduction is expected to accelerate the wider adoption of LNG as a cleaner alternative fuel in the Baltic Sea by providing a mobile and efficient ship-to-ship -ship distribution service. MESC announced major changes to its connecting services between the west coast of South America, WCSA, the Caribbean, and Central America, to and fro Northern Europe that will take effect from January 2022. This includes the closure of the Equipex service North Europe to Mexico to WCSA to Ecuador. In detail, the connection from Northern Europe to the ports of Veracruz and Altamira of the Equipex service will be transferred to the Costa Rica Express CRX service to on the Northern Europe to US East Coast to Central American routes, US AC to Central routes. Consequently, Exports from Ecuador to Northern Europe will be transshipped in Panama on the CRX service or on the Chill Express CLX, which is going to be on the Northern Europe to West Coast North America route. And now, our complaint register for the week. Four complaints were received and they are all ongoing investigations. The complaints include unlawful seizure of goods, malicious and willful damage to goods, non-release of consignments and excess transfer charges. The council was appreciated for its intervention that ensured timely delivery of Mr. Austin Nwode's containers from Port San Cargo to Kachike Resource Bonded Terminal. Here is his letter of appreciation. Now, remember that as a regulated service provider, you need to register via the website www.shippersTradeData.gov.ng. It is compulsory. And that's it on this week's tidbits. Till next time. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodele Shoyodele in Apapa, Lagos. Or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the point of your need. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your need. And that's it on your favorite maritime program on television. We implore regulated service providers to register with Nigerian Shippers Council on www.shipperstradedata.gov.ng. It is compulsory. Until we come your way again, do have a swimmingly great week. Goodbye.